Welcome to episode 47 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and this week my guest is Josh Centers from Tidbits. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, David. Yeah, thanks for ha- thanks for coming on. You're a first time guest. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about there's a new story I've in, in our agenda for today. And uh, of course, you are a great author of many take control books at takecontrolbooks.com. And uh, the bo- the two I wanted to talk about today would be Take Control of Notes, which I'm so thrilled you did. That was, that's a great book, uh, and, and I really never any any a focus on that topic. And then uh, take control of iOS 12, and we've got some great tips that we're going to talk about uh, in a little bit here. As well as I, I always inaugurate my f- first-time guests by asking them what their what their iOS devices are, and uh, we and uh, we have to find out what you have in uh, in, in your uh, toolbox as far as uh, anything related to iOS. So um, uh, let's uh, let's go right in, and we'll uh, we'll get started. We could talk about the news. There was one news article that just actually came out uh, while we we're recording this. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to pick pick at that at as of yet, but uh, it's um, Apple had uh, pulled uh, the iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 models from for sale in Germany amid some big battles which they've been having with Qualcomm. Um, if, if anybody isn't aware, uh, there's there's a big battle between Qualcomm and and, um, and them having problems with the patent infringement and 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 infringing on other things. Uh, did you, have you have you reviewed any of this as far as what Qualcomm is doing to Apple? Uh, you know, all I really know about is the situation with China that happened a while back, and right. uh, of course, Apple had to issue that emergency iOS 12 update to uh, work around uh, that patent business, and so they could start selling their phones in China again. And so, so it's kind of interesting that there's another issue yeah. in Germany now. I, you know, did they not address this before? I, you know, I, I haven't heard about this one specifically, so I'm a little, I'm a little. Yeah. Uh, confused <laughs> yeah yeah no i it it just got posted uh, as we record this um and uh basically there's the big legal battles uh, span that's spanning across multiple countries actually uh because apple was sued by or actually qualcomm sued uh, apple alleging uh, uh, uh you know royalties and, and then I, and apple's uh, actual position is saying that uh they're uh it's a desperate attempt to distract the real issues between the companies and then their tactics. What Qualcomm's doing is, is seems extreme and they're with the absorbent fields that they're trying to charge. So, um, but, uh, yeah, if you're in, if any listeners in Germany and if you're, if you go, I actually went to the German uh, Apple website and, uh, yeah, you don't see, uh, any more iPhones other than the 10 S the 10 R and the uh, 10 S max. So you are out of luck if you want to buy, uh, an iPhone seven or iPhone eight out there in Germany. So, uh, but uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's all part of Apple's genius plan to sell you the new iPhones. <laughs> that, I, I, I saw that. I was like, wow, that I mean, you're really forcing people to spend over a thousand bucks on a phone. Well, not this, not the 10 R, but uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was kind of uh, kind of an interesting thing to see. So um but with that, uh, let's uh, move on to our topics. And I, as I said at the beginning, I, I always like to find out what my new guests have as far as their iOS gear. Um, what kind of iPhone do you have? I'm afraid I'm part of the reason for Apple's decline. I did not get a new one this year. I, well, I got it's an okay. I, I have an <laughs> iPhone 10. Uh, you know, and mostly because uh, I didn't really see the new ones as being that interesting. Um, sure. And the, I'm, I'm on the iPhone upgrade program, but I'm just kind of hoping to pay this one off. Anyway, well, also, it's good Me to have too. a test device. So if I have one that's paid off and I get a new one, uh, you know, that's that's always a good thing. Um, I have an iPhone 6 uh, somewhere. I don't really use it. Uh, the battery shot. I didn't get it replaced because yeah. uh, the Apple store is a long way away. And uh, uh, but I just use that for testing. Uh, during the summer months and then uh i have an ipad pro uh 10 and a half inch from last year okay and i have the apple pencil and the keyboard and all that good stuff for it and also somewhere around here i have an I- uh, ipad air and i keep these old devices around <laughs> well so when i start working on the book i start you know i try to start as soon as possible i'll try to start sure. with beta one and then i'll uh you know so i have these old devices around and i'll put it on the old devices first and i see how that goes and if things go well enough uh, you know, whatever point that is, it could be beta one, it could be beta three, it could be beta six. I'll put it on my main devices because I find I can't really write authoritatively about this stuff un- until I live with it every day, you know, uh, yeah. warts and all. Right. So, 
you know, and that's sort of my process. So I like to keep, you know, an older generation of stuff around and then I have my current stuff. And then, you know, over time, you know, I get new stuff and the cycle continues. Yeah, that, that, I think we're very similar in that case. I'm on the, I'm on the, uh, the trading plan, plan as well, and I do trade in every year. So I was tempted to keep the 10, but I didn't do it. I, I, I did initially, but then I ended up uh, turning it in as a trade and to, to – uh, and then gave in. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but and of course, you're you're a big Apple TV guy too, because you you also wrote the book on Apple TV for Take Control. Uh, I'm assuming you have a few of those. Yeah, I, got, I have two Apple TVs. I have uh, the Apple TV Four, of course, which is actually a developer kit. Apple mm. was nice enough to send me one of those when you get one for a dollar. And nice. uh, yeah, so I, so I got one of those and it helped me get the book out a little earlier than I thought I would. And then I got an Apple TV 4K. And I didn't just rush out to get it because uh, I wasn't that impressed with it, to be honest. But then DirecTV yeah. now had a deal. Where you pay you for like, <laughs> yeah, you pay for three months. You get the free Apple TV. That's I'm like, what I did. Yeah. That's an amazing deal. I can't pass that up. So I did that. Uh, I um, did too. Great. You get great minds think alike. Huh? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, just to rant a little bit here, you know, the Apple TV 4K is too expensive for what it is. It's nearly $200. I mean, there, you can get a lot of really neat stuff for that price. And frankly, I hate to say this, being the guy who wrote the book on it, but I haven't <laughs> touched my Apple TV in months. We oh. got one of those TCL Roku TVs, and we just oh, okay. used, we use the Roku software. And uh, I, I'm, my other TV, I have my PlayStation hooked up to that, so I just use the PlayStation on that. And I, I don't have a lot of reason to use the Apple TV, so um, sure. I've just kind of moved away from it, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Well, and then of course, I don't, and, and you're not an Apple Watch guy, right? Nah, I I have a the series zero, I guess they call it now. Um, right. I just didn't see much. Well, I, I got it. Um, I got it. You know, to help with the uh, tidbits coverage. You know, because we we assumed there would be all these great apps that would be worth writing about, uh, and of course that hasn't really been the case. And so I haven't found much call to get one. Although recently, um, Adam Inkst was uh, was off work for a week, and I found mm-hmm. myself having to edit. Uh, Apple Watch stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, Adam, can, can I bug you for a minute? Can you look at this? Because I don't yeah, have a yeah. clue. So yeah. I might have to get a Series 4 at some point just so I know what the heck people are talking about. But, you know, it's gotten very expensive to keep up with the entire Apple ecosystem now. Oh, it's such- it is, yeah. If you're on a limited budget, you're, you're yeah, it's going to be tough. And but unfortunately, you know go ahead. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the writing field, yeah, your, your budget is certainly not unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. So... But uh, all right, uh, well, I'm, I'm great to hear what all the thing, great things you do have, and uh, you you definitely have to stay on top of these things, especially, especially since you're writing all these awesome books. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about a little bit with uh, you on uh, take control of notes. I, I was super stoked when you when you released this book, uh, Josh, because uh, uh, there no one's ever talked about this topic before, and it's uh, it's it's such a it's such a great uh, it's such a great tool, and and a lot of people don't even know what its maximum capabilities it has so um so uh and it's and 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 guys it's it's a really reasonably priced book and i mean for 4.99 it's worth the, is a 4.99 right mm, 5.99 i think 5.99 sorry about that i didn't make take a dollar from you for 5.99 that i mean that's that's it's a bargain i mean for what he's what he's uh, reviewing so but we're going to talk about a few of the things in there uh that you that you really highlighted uh, uh first off was one of the topics i that caught my eye was uh, making and managing notes and you go through a lot of uh, the details and relates to where you put your notes and why don't you kind of t- touch upon that a little bit as far as uh, what what you found uh is, was in that in that topic Right. So, you know, well, a lot of people may not realize about notes is that there's actually a lot of ways you can make a note. And it seems yeah. so obvious if you – even if you use notes for a long time, you think, okay, open up the notes app, hit the little, the little pencil button there, right. and you make a note. But there's actually a lot of ways you can do it. Uh, you know, if you have a keyboard attached, and whether that's – well, this is an iOS show, so I'll try to stick to iOS here. But if you right, have a keyboard right. attached, it's command N. It's the same thing on the Mac. Um but you can also, if you have an Apple Pencil and you have a compatible iPad, uh, one well, of the newer yeah. basic iPads or an iPad Pro, you can just mm-hmm. tap the pencil on the screen and that will create a, a new note for you. And it lets you uh, quickly jot down notes in like a meeting or take a sketch or whatever. Um, yeah. and, if, and if you don't have an Apple Pencil, if you just don't like or you can't find your Apple Pencil because it rolled off your desk, mm-hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a notes button in Control Center you can tap and create a new note. And there's all sorts of settings that go along with that. 
uh, you know, uh, different ways you can create a note. Like you, for instance, you can resume a note you already started. You can create a whole new note. Siri can create notes. And uh, perhaps one of my fa- – I hardly ever use that, but one of my favorite ways to create a note is uh, you can share something. Uh, so from the share sheet, you can select notes as your target, and then yep. you can create a new note for with that, and you can embed – there's all kinds of stuff you can embed in a note. A lot of people don't realize this, um, but I heard I heard from some readers after they had read the book and and mm-hmm. they started playing with all the stuff and they're like, hey, I can I can add this to a note. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, you can <laughs> you can uh, share from like voice memos. You can you can embed a voice memo in a note. You can embed a, a photo or a video in a note. Uh, you can embed yeah. uh, uh, web pages. Yeah, web pages, um, uh, maps. So that's one of my favorite obscure uses is is a. Uh, you know, if you're compiling like I don't map data for some reason, you can share uh, a map location to a note. No, yeah, no, it, it's absolutely crazy. Um, even organizing notes, uh, uh, do you find it to be easier to organize a lot of your notes there that are in the, in the app? Mm, I, what do you mean exactly? Well, I mean, it, it's as far as it's easy enough to create the notes, but. You, uh, as far as organizing them, because I always find challenges to trying to find where my notes are. Um, do you have you have you dealt in that at all? As far as uh, as far as that goes. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not as uh, it, you know, it's not as you know, feature rich as Evernote. Uh, you know, you do, you, you don't have tagging, you don't have things like that. But you know, you also don't have all the bulk. You don't have all the weight. Right. Um, so. Uh, you know, you know it, for me, it balances out. You know, if, if you're a person who, you, you know, you have needs beyond just uh, kind of what the old Notes app provided. You know, the old Notes app is very bare bones. Uh, mm-hmm. But you don't, you don't want all the, the heft of something like Evernote. Then it works pretty well. Like, you can create uh, folders and organize your notes that way. You can, um, uh, you know, so, that, so it's pretty basic in that regard. The search actually works pretty well in my experience. Uh, especially for an Apple product, um, you know, and I give some, I offer some tips in the book for for dealing with that. Like for instance, uh, you know, just because it doesn't support tags doesn't mean you can't add something like a tag to your right. note. You can, you know, add some keywords to the bottom of a note to make it easier to find. That's especially useful um, if you do things like one thing notes can do. It can scan documents, and so you can scan oh, a document. I love that feature. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing <laughs> feature. A lot of people don't know about it. You can scan a document and then you can add, uh, you know, if you add some keywords to the bottom of it, you know, downward, you're not going to see it anyway, then it makes it easier to find. So, you know, in ter- and, you know, between uh, the folders and the search, I found that finding uh, notes in notes is, uh, you know, usually pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Um, password protecting notes. Have, have you found that to be uh, uh, easy? Because sometimes I had trouble if I don't remember the password. You're kind of out of luck, right? Yeah, yeah. You're 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 up the creek if you get your password because you can reset the password, but then those notes are locked forever unless you somehow remember uh, the password. So um, yes. I, I even had, I don't feel bad. I had a little bit of trouble with that when I was drafting the book because I had some notes I had locked uh, oh, just as yeah. a test, and then I'd forgotten the password. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, so that's something that's very important. If you if, if you use something like one password, uh, be sure to to note that stuff down. Be sure <laughs> to note that stuff down. Um, yeah, because I got in trouble when I couldn't find I find the password, and then I, I, at least I got lucky and found it with one password. But uh, yeah, you got to be careful with with the, anytime you put a password on any file. I mean, it's the same thing if you if you use a, a a pages document or a word document. If you put a password on it, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's common sense, but it, it, it trips people up. Um, you know, but that's, it's a useful feature if you, you know, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't store passwords in a note, but, um, you know, things like, Hey, for instance, like, you know, we just, I mean, it's just past the Christmas season, you know, but let's say you're working on a Christmas list and you don't want right. somebody to look through your phone and see where you're getting people right. for Christmas. You can password protect that, you know, you know, lesser stuff like that. Or, you know, um, yeah, here's something, you know, sometimes I'll like just add in a note, like for instance, uh, a friend of ours. They wanted us to check on their house, and they told us the uh, the passcode to get past their security system. And so I just I just opened that in a note and jotted it down because that's my reflex, and it's a lot easier than opening one password and and finding wherever the heck you put notes at and all that. Um, and so I wrote that down, and then you can password protect something like that and keep it secure. Um, yeah. So it's it's good for things like that. It's a really nice thing to know about. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And then uh, other uh, other thing I know you talked about in the book was uh, importing notes from other services. Did you? Um, I I'm a OneNote user because um, mm-hmm. I have to be on the Windows world, unfortunately, for work. So, <laughs> right. uh, did 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 you try to do any importing with OneNote? Did it did it go well or? Uh, not one note. Uh, I wrote an article a while back for Tidbits uh, where mm-hmm. I imported all my notes from Evernote. And that worked pretty well, uh, in all things considered. I mean, you lose yeah. some of the fancier formatting options. Uh, so, sure. But the nice thing is, is that it, it, when it imports those things, it imports them into their own folder. Mm-hmm. So they don't get mixed in with all the rest of your notes, um, you know, unless you want, want to mix them in. And I, I, f- I found it's actually very ver- it's pretty versatile when it comes okay. to those imports too. I had a uh, I had a reader email. I can't remember the name of the app. It was some obscure app that hadn't been updated since like 2005 or so. <laughs> and I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, so I download. I'm like, okay, I don't know about this, but I'll see. So I downloaded it, and I uh, I figured out how to export. Thankfully, it was just a simple. Uh, it does a simple RTF export, which notes can yeah. import, and uh, yeah, and I'm. I made some test notes and export them, import them. Worked fine. I I told them how to do it, and uh, ha- had a happy customer. So it, it does a pretty good job. Now you know if one I don't know about OneNote could do some pretty fancy stuff. Like OneNote, you can you can you can draw on the screen things like that. Is is that right? Um, yeah, you can draw on it. Um, um, there's it's a lot of pretty comprehensive uh, formatting, but uh, Microsoft is going to be changing it pretty soon here. From what I'm hearing, because uh, they have a standalone app, but uh, it's actually on the Mac too. I'm talking about it. it's not just Windows, uh, and uh, I I'm not sure where their direction is going with that with the uh, with the standalone app. I think it's going to um, maybe go away and maybe become just a just an online version, which they have. So I'm they're, they're still working through all that stuff but uh, no i mean it, it is very powerful so i was to say you're right i mean the notes app is basic it's not anything mm-hmm. extravagant but it works great in that sense but it will transfer I, I would go under the assumption it'll transfer most things and look you know just what you need so uh mm-hmm. spe- speaking of speaking of looking formatting notes uh uh seems like it's pr- pretty powerful too and a tool uh as well so and, and you went through the book and uh talking about a lot of the basic formatting did you find that uh, some of the uh uh, the formatting uh, tools were pretty good in in, uh, in notes. Yeah, I I think Apple has reached a really good balance with the formatting tools in notes, where they give you just what you need and nothing more and nothing less. You know, you have uh, like you know, if you want to go in and and well, I want this to be one font and this to be another font, and I want to apply these different styles. It's not the thing for you, but yeah. it get they really boil down the styles you need. Uh, so you have styles like title, heading, body, monospace, and then you have um, formats like bold, italics, underline, strike through. Right, right. And, and it really gets to what you need. I mean, you can um, you can adjust the text size, stuff like that in settings. But, you know, um, they, they manage to boil down to just what you need in that little – a uh, palette that pops up on your iPhone, uh, so you're not overwhelmed with with features and choices, uh, but you're you know, but you generally have what you need, um, if not necessarily maybe what you want. Okay, okay, and then uh, I know a lot of uh, I, the to do lists are awesome. I mean, I think it works really mm-hmm. well, don't you think? Um, I mean, it's it's uh, it. I, I find it uh, to be very uh, convenient when you're doing when you want a qu- quick to do list. Uh, did you find anything different out of it with the to do lists uh, beyond what the basics? Right. No, w- one of my favorite uh, uses for notes uh, are to-do lists. And uh, w- one of the reasons is is it's so freeform. You know, you use something like OmniFocus. I, look, I love OmniFocus, but OmniFocus is like, uh, you know, for a lot of times for me, it's it's way too much machinery. You know, it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's a total overkill for what you need. Um, what I like about uh, notes is that it's a lot more freeform. Uh, you know, you're not forced to use a certain format, but you can do, like, for instance, you know, if you want to do getting things done, Notes totally supports that because you can create a to-do list. You can indent things. So you can have the top level be the project. You know, people know getting things done. You know, you like you have to-do items, and that's one thing that just takes a, It's just one single action. And then anything that takes more than that's considered a project. And then you branch that out. Yeah. You can do that using indents and outdents in Notes, which is a really cool feature. And then um, – you can also share a note with someone else as a collaborator. I mean, not just send them the bare bones note, but actually add them as a collaborator if they have an iOS or they can even do it from the web browser. But if they have an iOS device or a Mac, 
uh, you know, or an iCloud account. You can share that with them. My wife and I use that all the time for a uh, grocery list. You know, we use an app called Paprika, which is mm-hmm. really, which is a really good recipe manager and grocery list and stuff. But sometimes we, we junk, we clutter up our paprika with a bunch of stuff. And, and when we don't have, we don't have time to sit there and clean it out and figure out exactly what we need. I'll just make a list, a shopping list of notes. We'll share it real quick, figure out what exactly we need and, and off we go. And even something like paprika, it, it tries to do things like, oh, well, this is in this aisle and this is in that aisle. And which is handy in certain con, but like when I need things like okay, I need some meat and some light bulbs and a hammer, you know, then then paprika starts getting confused by things like that. So no, yeah. notes doesn't have that problem because notes is just whatever you want to make of it. Um, and so uh, here's another use of notes. Let's say let's say you're going shopping, and you got five places to go uh, mm-hmm. to do things or pick up stuff. Okay, you can create five headings. Let's say uh, bank, Walmart. Uh, track supply. I, I live in the south, so um, sure. <laughs> you know, post office, you know, whatever. You can create headings for each place you want to go. Have a small to do list under that. You can share that with uh, your spouse or you know whoever, and right. and you can both work on it, collaborating on that together, checking I things off or adding things. Yeah, and it's so free form, and it's it's really it adapts to wherever you want to use it for. And I try to show that in the book. I start. I start off showing a, a very basic to-do list, and over time, you know, over a few pages, I grow it and and make it more complicated and, and mm-hmm. add headings and things like that. And just to show you, you can take the, the one list and make it as simple or as complex as you want it, and right. it's really it adapts to you. And 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 what I love is because it's it, it it's on iOS, it works great, I and mean, especially on an iPad. The iPad gives you a fuller screen. But even on the iPhone, I've I've had some good uh, uh, good experiences being able to just to create a quick note for something if I found something and uh, just pop it right in there. And you're right, or it could be extremely complex. Speaking of complex, I mean you also can create tables, which is pretty pretty phenomenal for a, for a free app uh, in, in notes. Um, how how did you find that the tables worked uh, uh, when you did the book? You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm still kind of baffled by tables. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've asked a bunch of people. I'm like, what well, what do you use these for? And and, and no one really has a great use uh, yeah. for them. I have some exa- I show some examples in my book. You know, I've seen yeah, some see. examples. Like you can, uh, yeah, I was selling some games, and so you know, I was showing. Oh yeah, you can use this. And, it's like a table. <laughs> yeah, you can do like a table. Um, you, you know, and you can you can do like uh like if your kid plays baseball, you can set up your baseball schedule. Honestly, though, like tables. I don't see the point because um, anything I would use that for, I'd really use like Excel or Numbers or or Google Sheets or a spreadsheet that can do the math mm-hmm. for me. Um, but it's a nice thing to know. Like I'm sure there's somebody who's read this book or somebody who's listening right now who yeah, has a perfect yeah. use for a table and a note. And I'm there for you. If 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 you want to know <laughs> how to do that, I tell you how to do it. I don't quite understand why it's there. Uh, I even I asked Joe Kissel, our publisher, you know, and Joe's, uh-huh. you know, genius and stuff. He didn't have any clue either. And so, <laughs> so I'll, Man, I'll tell he you, doesn't know. Yeah, we're we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's somebody at Apple who like they had a very yeah. specific use case in mind. I would love to talk to that person, but uh, unless Apple makes that happen, uh, I'll never know. <laughs> um, and then uh, the graphics. You just you, you talked about it a little bit earlier. I love mm-hmm. the fact you can insert photos and videos. I mean, that's just that's just phenomenal in, in a in a complete a simple app like Notes. Um, you also talked about continuity camera. I, I saw you you see you did a video actually on how to yeah. how to use that. Um, what is a continuity camera? What is, what would uh, well, it's so the listeners know what uh, what that's uh, what that will do for them. Right. So continuity camera is a really clever feature of iOS 12 and Mac OS Mojave. Mm-hmm. That lets you uh, use your iPhone as a camera or a scanner for your Mac. So uh, you can s- you set it up so uh, you take you take a picture with your iPhone and it shows up in your Mac. That feature, awesome. it's cool, it's neat, but I don't really get the point because you can. S- it's easy enough to take a photo and sync it anyway. What's really True. cool, what's really cool about continuity camera is you can use it to directly scan things to your Mac desktop. Right. Um, so yeah, and I, I made that video about it. That's, that's actually been a pretty popular video. Um, and yeah, so, uh, you can, and you can do this from a lot of different apps. You can do it from notes, which is why we're talking about it. Uh, you can do it from your desktop, but, uh, you just, you open a menu and you'll say import from iPhone and then the, uh, the camera or the scanner will pop up on your iPhone and you take the picture, you scan the document, you know, whatever. And it shows up, uh, on your Mac, pretty magical feature, pretty cool. Um, I, and so that's one of the things I explain in the book how to do. I also show you, you can just, 
um, scan documents with notes for iOS. You don't have to have a Mac for that. You can just scan directly into a note, yeah. which is a really cool, handy feature. And, mm -hmm. you know, there might be better, there's definitely better scanners and there's, there's better scanner apps out there. But hey, notes sure. is always with you. It's always there. Right, you, don't have right. to, you don't have to find it on your home screen. You don't have to search for it. Um, really cool feature. And once you scan a note, you can also mark it up. You can edit the, you can edit the, and it create, and it makes a PDF. Like when you scan, it makes like a straight up PDF mm -hmm. and you can add pages to it and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, even if you just capture it quickly in notes and notes doesn't have the tools you need to whatever it is you want to do with it, you can export that, uh, on your Mac and, and take it elsewhere and, you know, do what you need. So it, but it's a great thing to know about because you never know when, when you're going to have to sk quickly scan a document, you, you never know when that's going to happen. So it's, it's definitely a good thing to know about. Yeah. And then, and then the other tools I, I'm, I really like is the, the drawing and sketching along with the scanning. I mean, the scanning is great. I mean, it just insert, insert an image, boom, you you got it, you got a note and you can go back and look at it later. Even with the uh, with uh, with the sketching tools and taking notes and, and being able to use it with the Apple Pencil, um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's as good of experience using it on the iPhone. But uh, have you tried much of that with, uh, with uh, trying to uh, draw anything on the iPhone? Yeah, I, I'm not a good drawer in the first place, so um, yeah. <laughs> you no. Know, but yeah. it worked. I mean, it works pretty well. It worked better if you know the phone supported the pencil. Uh, but you know, yeah, for doing basic stuff with your finger, you know, do basic sketches and things like that. Um, it works pretty well for, uh, for stuff like that. Um, you know, I have a friend who, uh, he, uh, you know, he's, he's a lot more artistic than I am. He like he loves drawing stuff and he, he really wears it out with, uh, his iPad and the Apple pencil, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. Now I, you know, he, he'll use uh, more specialized apps, but mm -hmm. Notes uh, has actually has a lot of really interesting tools. Like well, I think my favorite uh, sketching tool in Notes is uh, there's this on-screen ruler, mm -hmm. and yes, and, he, yes. and you plop it down on the canvas, and then you can use your fingers. You can rotate it, you can move it, you can make it bigger, whatever. But if you want to draw, and it'll tell you what angle you're at, like whenever you're rotating it, and then, so mm -hmm. if you want to draw a straight line at any certain angle, you can just rotate it into place, draw your draw your line, and then, you know move it. And even though I, I, I'm not a very good artist, uh, you know, I, I love playing with that <laughs> ruler because it because you can make a, a whole series of like very neat parallel uh, lines with, with the ruler tool. So it's it's very satisfying. Yeah, no. It, and uh, yeah, it, it is. It is. It, it's fun. And, and I like the fact that if you have your iPad, you want to sketch something out. It's synced with your notes, and you can go right to your iPhone and take a look at it. So you you, you always have that with you between both your devices. So. But uh, that, that in a nutshell is notes. I mean, there's like I say, it's a short and sweet book, but uh, but a good book, and uh, and uh, and uh, it's not uh, it's not a bad read. So uh, why don't you check that out, and we'll give you all the information at the end of the show too. So let's uh, let's change gears here a little bit and talk a little bit about iOS 12. And you you you've always you've been writing an iOS book since uh, gosh how how far back like iOS 8. Yeah, yeah, you, you nailed it. See, it, it's great having a loyal reader as as an interviewer in one of these things because <laughs> you, you you buy all my books, you read them all, uh, so it's yeah. it's great. I appreciate it. Um, oh, no problem. Uh, yeah, so we started, and that was back when we were doing the crash course books. It's actually one of our first crash. Those. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was one of our first crash course books. And people don't know what I'm talking about. We experiment with this format. Take control books are just in one column. We try to do a two column uh, magazine like format. What we called mm -hmm. crash course. And so there was um, iOS 8, the Take Control Crash Course, and that's how this series started. And then when Joe Kissel took over uh, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. we decided to get rid of the uh, Crash Course format, which honestly was great with me because it was – we always had problems with it. It was super buggy. Uh, our text our, – our word processor didn't really like it much at all. Um mm -hmm. So uh, we just converted that to regular Take Control titles now. But anyway, I've been – yeah, so I've been doing this uh, since yeah. – iOS 8, and that was the beginning. And that was a rough one, too, because iOS 8... Yeah, I remember there was a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't finished. on like Because a lot because that was when they yeah. introduced a lot of iCloud-based stuff. Yeah. And there was a lot of stuff that straight up didn't work until launch day. And so <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was flying blind for a lot of the summer and then working with this new format. And so it uh, was super stressful. But you know, over the years since, uh, we've had a lot of time to you know really polish this manuscript and and make it shine and, and Apple's gotten a lot better about their beta iOS releases too. So it's yeah, been, it's sure. been fun watching that 
that evolution there. So um, a couple, I, I pull off, I pulled a few things that I was thought that listeners would be interested in uh, talking about a little bit. Um, uh, the first one was shortcuts. Shortcuts it seems mm-hmm. to be a, quite a quite a, an advanced thing, because uh, if if everybody doesn't know, uh, the shortcuts app used to be uh, a company uh, called Workflow, and Workflow was a app that was awesome. Did a lot of automation. I mean, there's there's people out there that are doing all kinds of crazy. Uh, stuff with it but cool crazy stuff um but you did you did write a bit a, a short uh piece as far as how to install it and of course installing the app is as easy as just going out and downloading it from the from the app store it's it's there and installing it um have, did you dabble into any of this at all as far as using the shortcuts or uh, what 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 did, you, what did you find uh, that stood out uh, as far as shortcuts goes you know one of the things i've heard from people uh you know and i have found true myself is that uh, a lot of people aren't really using the more elaborate shortcuts. What people are doing with shortcuts is using it to smooth over the rough edges in iOS and the things that Apple has made difficult to do. A classic example, um, downloading an MP3 from a web page. Right. Uh, on a desktop, that's a really easy thing to do. On iOS, it's been almost oh. impossible. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a special browser or you know some kind of hack. So what you can do now... Uh, there's actually in the in the ga- in the um, shortcuts the gallery. gallery, yeah, in the gallery. And, and by the way, you don't have to know how to code stuff to take advantage no. of shortcuts. You go to the gallery. Apple's got a lot of really neat stuff for you already. And uh, there, there's a there's a item uh, download. I think it's download MP3 or download audio in, in the gallery, and you you install that, and it'll show up um, in your share sheet. So if you go to web page, you load an MP3 in Safari, you tap the share icon. Uh, you scroll over to shortcuts, you tap that, and then you can choose the, sh- the shortcut you want to run, which you know, we download audio or uh, whatever it's called. And it'll, it'll down- you can download it to your um, iCloud drive or wherever. You can find it in the files app. Right. And uh, so that's something that you can do now thanks to shortcuts um, that Apple hasn't thought to properly implement yet. So it's really great for little things like that. And that's really my biggest use of it right there. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. But um. There's there's one I saw somebody came up with where uh, you activate it and it's like basically if you're getting pulled over by the police uh, you activate the <laughs> shortcut and it starts recording and it and it does yeah. and it turns your music off and all this other stuff I'm not sure how actually useful that <laughs> is in real life but it's a neat idea you know the, and that's the thing with a lot of automation stuff and I also did a home automation book and I found a lot of people do the same thing with home automation there's a lot of things yeah. that like that sounds like a really cool idea and they code it up and then you never actually use it. Or if you use it, you find out, oh, wait, this is way more than I actually need in this situation. And so I try to be, with any kind of automation, whether it's just automation on my iOS device or automation in my home, I try to be kind of basic with it. And, and like, okay, what do I actually need, you know, instead of trying to be, uh, you know, it's like the Jeff Goldblum quote from Jurassic Park. You know, you, you spend so much time thinking about whether you could, you didn't think about whether you should. You know, I try to take that approach with any kind of automation. Okay. So, uh, so it doesn't sound like you get too elaborate because, like I said, there's there's plenty of other podcasts out there that get that into really deep into to going into some major coding of different things and automation. If you want interest in that, but but it, that, that's a, that was just a great great uh, review in a nutshell. What shortcuts can do now? People get confused with shortcuts and Siri shortcuts. And when mm-hmm. with, with Siri shortcuts, oh, do you do you find anything any useful things with using uh, setting up Siri Siri shortcuts? No, I'll be honest, I haven't found it super useful, but just to explain the difference, and, and Apple made this really confusing. And, and Apple t- tends to do this thing, they, they use what I call umbrella terms. Like um, a really good example would be continuity, uh, which mm-hmm. I think they introduced in iOS 8, which is one of my bugaboos that particular <laughs> summer. But Apple introduced something, they'll call it one thing, and you look in, iCloud's another good one, because iCloud is like 10 different yeah. services, but right. it's all just branded as iCloud. And, and so they tend to do things like this. So you have... Shortcuts, the app, which you download from the App Store, it's separate from a Mm built-in feature called Siri Shortcuts. Siri Shortcuts, in plain English, is for a long time, people wanted to be able to make their own Siri commands, and that's what Siri Shortcuts does. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's built into the OS. It's in Settings, Siri, and Search. You go in there, there's there's an item called Siri Shortcuts, and you can... uh, and by default, it, it only suggests just a few certain things. Um, and so it, it could be a little tricky to work with. But long story short, and I also have a video on this, too. If you search for my name on YouTube, Josh Centers, I have a, uh, a video on it. It's also on the Tidbits 
channel too. So if you look up tidbits on YouTube, there's a video that shows you how to use this feature. Um, but long story short, you can create your own custom Siri commands. Um, you know, and it also integrates with third party apps. Now I, I found it useful for some things like for instance, uh, a friend of mine does a, a show called the, another podcast, sorry, another podcast mm -hmm. called the mini no, no. bar. That's and good. I, and I, uh, I have a, uh, uh, I use Marco Armit's um, Overcast podcast right. player typically when mm -hmm. I listen yep. to such things. And so I have a Siri shortcut that that tell that I can tell Siri to play the latest episode of the menu bar. I have another short uh, Siri shortcut where um, I use Carrot Weather. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do that too. Great app. Yeah, by far the best weather app for iOS right now. And yeah. I, I, I can pull that up with a Siri shortcut. I, I, I forgot which one it is, but <laughs> off the top of my yeah. head, or I, There's I do. There's so right many. Here. Yeah, I got too many. But anyway, um, you know, I, I can ask uh, Siri for the weather and it will pull it up as uh, as carrot weather instead of the built in weather app. So those are actually pretty useful. I don't use just I don't use it just a ton. But again, it's one of those things where you can kind of sand down those rough edges of iOS. OK, great. And that, I think that that really gives us a good uh, good view of what uh, to what shortcuts can really do. Um, but the, 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 read the book. I mean, you're going to definitely see a lot of more, more things you'll see in there. Um, one of your sections that, that really caught my eye was hone the home screen. I like that. And there was a <laughs> lot of, lot of cool things that, uh, that there is available on the home screen. People don't really have a good idea of, and I wanted to kind of to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, you, you did a great review of learning home screen basics and understanding the basics and moving apps and, uh, uh, deleting apps and, uh, just, all kinds of um, uh, all kinds of other ways of being uh, keeping things manual, managed, and that's that's always where it's always uh, this difficult. What what kind of stood out as far as I know it's probably a wider question, but what what really stands out to you as far as some of the v most valuable things that you can do on the home screen? Mm. Uh, one thing uh, people should probably know about, and this came about uh, I think in iOS 11. Um, mm. You know, for a long time you can only move one app at a time. So if you want to populate right. a folder, you to drag an app, move it over, drag an app, move it over. Something to know, uh, and if, you, if you missed this, this is why you need my book, you can yes. actually uh, move multiple apps into a folder at once. And what you do is you just, you drag, you, you tap and hold to drag it, like just like normal. And then as you're going along, if you tap other app icons, it will get added to the stack under your finger. And there will be a little bubble that will pop up with a number, and it'll tell you how many you have in it. And then you can drop that entire stack of apps into a folder and and create that, you know, populate that folder all at once. So that's a really good thing to know about um, if you don't already. Another thing uh, that stands out to me about this chapter uh, is uh, the the notifications. We haven't quite got to that yet, but one of the things uh, no, a no. lot. A lot of people get confused because I do talk about notifications in this chapter. It just doesn't really fit anywhere else. Um, you know, I, I talk about so you have the badges, you know, those annoying little red things. First of all, I, I tell people, look, disable those for every app um, unless they absolutely need them, like um, yeah. VIPs and mail or messages, things like that. Things are like, if you see one, you tap on because otherwise you're just going to ignore them. That at least in right. my in my experience. Um, Another thing I, I, I really like uh, being, uh, being able to explain to people is the difference between temporary banners and persistent banners or yes, um, yes. Uh, what Apple, I, I think they, they call them alerts. Uh, Apple keeps changing the names for these things. So I just say <laughs> it's a temporary banner or persistent banner. And this isn't as bad as it used to be, but it used to be, um, especially when Apple first started doing the, uh, the drop down notifications, uh, how, however many versions ago that was, uh, mm -hmm. you get a lot of these alert banners that would just pop down and just stay there, and, and, and people are like, what, what, is, what is this? And you know, they have to swipe them away. And so you can adjust that, and there is a name for it, and there's a setting for it, and you can, uh, you can make temporary ones persistent, you can make the persistent ones temporary. So a good thing to know if you feel like you're not really in control of your notifications. And this is something I, tell, I, I advise every iOS user, do not be afraid to turn off notifications for an app. No. I'll tell you I do that in the book, but you get way too many of the dang things. Drive you crazy. Yeah, and so like, don't don't be afraid. Just just turn them all off and just turn on the ones you need. You know, messages you probably need, phone you probably need. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you, you know, I almost said Twitter, but not really. I <laughs> turn the turn the ones for Twitter off, except for DMs. If someone DMs me, I get it. Like you contact me through DM, so I saw that notification. Like Messenger apps, typically I'll say yeah, turn those notifications on, turn the rest of them off. 
You know, uh, now, of course, like we mentioned, carrot weather. One of the things all about carrot weather is it'll actually warn you about uh, mm-hmm. bad weather, uh, which, you know, in Chicago, I guess it's mostly uh, snowstorms you got there. Down here, we have tornadoes. Those things will straight up. A lot of snow you. here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's going to be 50 degrees to get today. For, really? For oh, man. January, yeah. So man. <laughs> that's unusual. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that ain't right. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, but yeah, I just give that sort of advice. Like, yeah, turn off turn off those annoying notifications because you'll get overloaded. If you have a bunch of them you don't need or want, you're going to get overloaded with them. And then you're going to end up ignoring the ones you actually need to see. So, yeah. No, and, and, that chapter alone it should be one of the more focused chapters just just to just to be comfortable with the home screen um uh 3d touch and you, you you had some tricks in there for 3d touch um uh, do you like 3d touch i'm not, I'm not i mean I, I use it somewhat not much what, what do you think um i think it's largely useless uh what <laughs> that's my thought <laughs> what i do like um and, and it seems like apple tends to agree with me i do like the, the taptic feedback oh um, for sure and so, you know, the iPhone uh, XR, XR, or however, however you want to say it, um, you know, it, it skips the 3D touch and just offers the, the haptic or taptic, whatever. It offers that feedback. Right. So I think that's the way things are going to go. I think 3D touch is probably going to slowly be phased out um, for various so. reasons. Um, but I do have some tips. If you do like the 3D touch, hey, if you have a, a phone, if you paid the money for a phone that supports it, you should get the most of it. You know, for instance, uh, you can you can uh, 3D press uh, 3D touch a uh, a folder and it'll pop out apps from it. Uh, just try it on different things as well. I'll suggest you know try it on different apps. There's lots of little shortcuts. It's sort of like a right mm-hmm. click or a control click on the Mac. So um, you know it's one of those things. It's it's fun to experiment and see what you can find there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, t- that 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 definitely some good tips on that, uh, and uh, and uh, working on the home screen. Uh, another another topic, and I've done a, I've done a presentation on this before, um, and uh, is on uh, the use of share sheets. Uh, mm-hmm. Shared sheets has a lot of powerful features that people don't even realize, um, and uh, and I, and you have some, some tricks in there. Maybe you could t- talk a, few, a little bit about some of the tricks that you had uh, related to the share sheets. Oh yeah, I mean, wow. Well, uh, share sheets. Um, it, it's kind of a misnomer. I wish Apple would redesign this particular yeah. interface because it, it, there's so much more than just sharing the stuff. There's all sorts of actions you can pull up. Uh, right. Like, if, for instance, if you use one password, um, yeah. you know, if you need to summon one password, that's where it lives. In Safari, you can do things like you can you can pull up a share sheet, you can search in a page, you can request right. a desktop site. Uh, you know, all, all sorts of little things like that. And I, I suggest some of these in the book. Um, and it's one of those things, uh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, there, there's a feature uh, in a lot of apps where you can, like, for instance, Safari, you can save a web page as a PDF, you right. know, and that's and that's a share. That, I, I guess that makes some sense because you can share it with, with the Apple books. But, um, yeah, there's lots of stuff like that. And so uh, one of those things, you know, different apps play with it, you know, tap that little arrow and see what you uh, – See what you get in that share sheet, because uh, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can find in there. Oh yeah, for sure, and uh, it, it, uh, it it really a lot of people don't don't know realize the, the the different areas where you can go in the share sheet and being able to to actually um, uh, uh, edit it. I mean, editing is the other mm-hmm. other challenge too. Just going in and turning on the activities that you want uh, in each row, uh, and just going in there and, and working with uh, with that stuff. So um, yeah, that could. And that can be tricky too, because so, a lot of apps yeah. uh, you have to turn those uh, features on before um, before you can see them in the share sheet. So yeah, it, I'm really hoping. I'm, I'm a wish list for iOS 13. Is it really going to be iOS 13? Uh, my, yeah. One of my things Lucky on my 13. wish list, yeah, <laughs> is that they uh, they uh, redesign that somehow. Like oh, if, another one, you know, if you want to mark mark up a web page or mark something up, that's in the share sheet. It's not really a share thing, but you know, it's just. Yeah. Here's where all the miscellaneous actions go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that definitely has some good information in there. Um, other topic I want to bring up too is uh, you know iPad does have the iPad has some special features in it, um, and you just we talked about it earlier with notes, um, mm-hmm. you, you being able to work with instant notes, uh, and you you explain that uh, with the in the control center. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit on that on the instant note and in the iPad and uh, what it could do? 
Right. So um, on the iPad, uh, as I mentioned before, if you have an Apple Pencil uh, and, of course, a compatible iPad, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's very important. You can tap uh, on the screen. You have to wake the iPad up first. That's the trick to it. But then once the iPad's awake, even if it's locked, you tap the pencil to it and it will um, it will open up a, a I think by default, it's a new note. And then uh, you can just draw on the screen there. And then if you do, if you don't have an Apple Pencil, or you have a device, or you have an iPhone, whatever, uh, you can, as I said, you can do that from Control Center too. It's it's the exact same thing if you press that button from Control Center. Something Apple didn't really explain very well when they introduced this feature, probably because they wanted to sell Apple pencils. And you know, I, I can't say as I blame them, but you know, that is something you don't have to have an Apple Pencil to use. And this is something. Uh, this this chapter actually evolved out of iOS 11 because uh, Apple added so much new stuff for the iPad and iOS 11. You know, I just looked at everything. And before we had um, like we had a chapter on multitasking, and we we added some of the special iPad features. And I had like various special i I had to do special little subsections throughout the whole book and say, okay, well this is an iPad, this is for the iPad. <laughs> and finally got to the point, Apple added so much of stuff for the iPad that I'm like, okay, the iPad has to have its own chapter. That's all, oh, otherwise, <laughs> this thing this thing's going to be unreadable otherwise. And so. And, and hopefully that makes things a lot more convenient for readers. And, uh, you know, so all, all your special iPad stuff, bam, it's all in one place. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other features, um, especially uh, the dock. I and mean, did you how, how do you find managing the dock? Because I, I actually like it. Yeah. Uh, I, as far as moving things around. Yeah. So they, they came out with that new dock in iOS 11. The, the, the I call it the Mac like dock. Um mm-hmm. I like it a lot, and and I really like the um, the suggested apps thing they they have on the right side there, where it's like uh, frequently yep. used apps or apps they think they're, you're about to use or apps you've used recently. I found that's actually really handy. It is. Um, you know, a lot of times those automatic suggestion things are just uh, annoying. Like some of the ones they add in iOS 12. Like for instance, every time I pull down. I pull down the search, uh, you know, I pull down spotlight search. Now it, it tries to get me to, you know, send a message to my mother, which, which is kind of funny. Um, so, uh, or, you know, Hey, call your mama. Uh, <laughs> so, right. so those are actually pretty useful. So I, I do like that doc. I do like it. It is definitely a move forward. Um, and then, uh, multitasking gestures, uh, and using two apps at once. Those are always been some tricky features I've used. Uh, did you, how, how do you find, uh, as far as multi multitasking and, and switching on the iPad? You know, I'm really honest. I don't use those, the no? split screen okay. stuff very much. I don't, um, you know, I, I know how to use them. I, I tell you how to use them in the book. I personally though, um, I don't know, maybe you have to have a big iPad to really take advantage of it. And what I found too about, um, just normal people who use iPads. Um, like my mom has one. My mother-in-law has one. Uh, my wife had, well, sure. she, she if technically has one. My kid all, always steals it. Um, <laughs> most normal people, most normal people do not use these. In fact, a lot of these people, a lot of normal people don't even know these things exist, um, uh, until they accidentally invoke them. Um, so it's something I think Apple could do a much better job of all around. It also, you know, as, as more of a power user, and, and I found other guys like us, uh, you know, get frustrated by it, too, because it's kind of limited. So on one hand, it's um, it's very easy to stumble into and, and feel like you've broken your iPad if you're just just an everyday user who doesn't you know read into this stuff. Mm-hmm. And if, uh, you know, you're, in a, you're a more advanced user, you find it very limiting and restrictive. So uh, I think there could be a lot of work done there. I mean, Apple's made a lot of improvement. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot more work that can be done. Um mm-hmm. But the good thing for me is, as a guy who's selling books, yes, this feature is kind of broken and confusing. So you need the book to understand <laughs> how to use it. <laughs> uh, you're funny. Um, yeah, so uh, – and then uh, lastly, I wanted to touch a little bit upon on Spotlight, uh, Spotlight Search. Um, mm-hmm. I, I find that Apple I, – I don't mind that you have to just scroll down and be able to search th- for things very simply and easily um, uh, as far as accessing it goes. And then, and then, then the features. I mean, do you like a lot of these features? I mean, I, some of these things I like to turn off. I mean, Siri suggestions is another one that kind of mm-hmm. drives me crazy. I don't know what what your thoughts on that is. Yeah, I'm. I'll be honest. It, it's kind of the Siri suggestions have been kind of annoying. Uh, at, at first, I was like, you know, well, first of all, I'm just like waiting for these things to pop up so I can say, oh yeah, here's a screenshot of it. Oh yeah, there it is. I can tell you how it works. Because and even to this day, there are some features that um, do not emerge in the betas for whatever reason 
Um, you know, maybe it needs more developer support or Apple has to flip a switch on the server end or, uh, not as bad as it used to be, uh, who not as bad as iOS eight, but, um, <laughs> so, so at first it's like, Oh, Hey, finally I see this thing. And now like every time I see it, um, I'm like, Oh boy, that's, that's really annoying. And, and really if I have a general annoyance with iOS these days is that a lot of times it feels like it's my mother. Cause it'd be like, well, <laughs> don't play right. with the phone while you're driving. It's time to go to bed. Your bedtime, <laughs> your bedtime timer's going off. Call your mama, call your mother. You know, it's like, okay. All right. Like who I, I'm paying like 70 bucks a month for this thing. Okay. Like I'm the boss here. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, the, 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 the shortcuts, uh, those, th those suggestions, I don't know. I don't find them terribly useful. Now I do. Why I typically will use spotlight for is for app launching because yeah. I have way too many apps. Um, it, it's, it's funny. Like, you know, I, I've given mug presentations where people like mm -hmm. boo me or get mad at me for all the apps I have on my phone. Cause I, I will download literally like just anything like, and, and, and so people, well, a lot of people make judgment. Oh, you use that app? Like, no, I just, I heard about it. I download it. You know, that's just the way yeah. I am. Cause I'm constantly looking, I'm constantly looking for something to write about or make a video about or just yeah. whatever. So I have probably 10,000 apps on my phone. It's, oh, it's a sickness. It's terrible. And see, uh, and every few years I have to declare bankruptcy and just wipe the phone <laughs> and just, you know, start fresh. So, um, yeah. you know, there's probably like, maybe four apps I actually use ever. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty basic it comes down to it, but yeah, when I do need, the, uh, well, I do need one of those obscure apps that isn't on my first home screen. I have to go searching for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's a spotlight. Uh, is got, it is very powerful and, and it is helpful. Um, uh, one other thing I want to talk about was uh, switching apps. And there was always that myth of either switching apps or closing apps. You know, they've made it a lot easier, even, especially, you know, with the, with the iPhone 10 and the iPhone XS mm -hmm. and uh, where you, before in iOS 11, you swiped it up. You had to hold it down to shut it down. But now you can just swipe, you swipe it up, and then you can get and close each one of them. But there's always been a myth that you had to close your apps out. I mean, Apple always says you don't need to close them. I mean, do you, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, generally. Um, you know, I have friends who I cannot convince them otherwise. They will close. I mean, I, every time I look over, like they're closing every single app just as soon as they open it. And you know, maybe it's maybe it's like a compulsive thing. I don't, I don't know. And I'm not here to judge, but and I will say, no, um, either. generally, uh, yeah, just leave your apps open unless you have a problem. Now, some apps right, you're exactly. going to have a problem, and some apps habitually have problems. Like I'll tell you, an app to keep closed uh, is Facebook because Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> yes. I'm convinced that Facebook does a lot of ugly things that I don't, I'm not even sure Apple knows about. I've, I, I I do not trust Facebook in the least. But yeah. you know, barring not just ha not having it installed, but see, they kind of force your hand on it. Uh, Facebook yeah, makes you. Yeah. Yeah. They make it very hard to not use the app. Um, so, uh, you know, they'll just rip features out of the web browser if they have to, they want you to use that app. Uh, cause they're, they're listening to everything you say anyway. Um, so yeah, I would, that's one I would close pretty consistently. Uh, you know, like I t I'll tell you a trick to this. I'll tell you a trick for this. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned this in the book, if you go to settings, you go to settings, get a battery. And then uh, it takes forever for the thing to load. But it'll tell you – it has all these fancy graphs and stuff. But if you look down, and you look at battery usage by app. And mm -hmm. uh, so what it's telling me here – see, um, what you're looking for, there's a little there's a little word they'll, they'll put under the app. They'll say background activity. So Twitter has used 34% of my battery life uh, today, <laughs> um, which says a lot about me. And then – Twitter. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm terrible at Twitter. Um, Facebook has used a quarter of my battery life, but now it says background activity there because you know they're recording everything you do. Um, so that that's an app that you should probably consider closing or never installing in the first place. Um, and this is a little worrisome. My Bible app has used six percent of my battery with background activity. So I'm wondering what the heck the background activity is in the Word of the Lord. Um, <laughs> now, uh, photos is used 4%, but and it says background activity. But see, I expect that because I, I want photos to be uploading my photos, right? Uh, Gmail, 3% background activity. But uh, again, I want Gmail to be syncing my mail when I don't have it open. So I don't mind that at all. So that's just something to keep an eye for. But see, that's a little worrisome if Facebook is taking up so much uh, battery in the background. And uh, I, uh, Scotty Loveless, who's a former Apple genius, he wrote a great blog post a few years ago. Um, as far as I know, it's still current, and he talks about this specific issue about closing the apps, all that. And one of the things he recommends 
he recommended in that post to maximize your battery life is do not install Facebook because it does a bunch of weird stuff in the background that nobody knows what's doing. And, um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's a battery tip for you. So yeah, maybe, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. No, that was great. I appreciate, we appreciate that. Um, one more thing I wanted to touch upon a little bit is you talked about handoff and have you had any good experiences with handoff? Cause sometimes it, it doesn't work real well. Mm -hmm. Um, Handoff is one of those features. Um, frankly, I think it's kind of ill-advised. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those things where they're they're throwing the wrong solution. Apple used the wrong solution for the right problem. The problem is uh, you need to be able to to sync things between your phone and, and your computer, uh, mm -hmm. and a, and the solution for that is the cloud. Apple's solution for that is a weird mix of of at the time was high end hardware to try to push people to, to buy newer hardware. I mean, this is just the way yeah. Apple thinks about everything. Um, nice. Now, one one of those features, I don't think this is technically considered handoff, but it's under that continuity umbrella we mentioned earlier. Uh, one feature I use all the time is AirDrop. Um, yes. And uh, because sync, like I, I take tons of screenshots. I need them on my desktop right away. iCloud sync sometimes is instant. Sometimes it takes forever. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just airdrop and, and it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, I don't have to connect a cable or anything like that. Um, you know, Android probably has a better way of doing it. I could probably just run an FTP server on an Android phone. And, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, people do that. People do no, that. I they know. run the servers and stuff yeah, on yeah. it's, it's crazy. Uh, you know, more power to them. But if you're, if you're in the iOS world, like we are, uh, airdrop airdrops great for that. Yeah. So, Wow, we talked about a lot of stuff, didn't we? And I covered yeah. both your books, too, in, yeah. in a very short period of time here. So um, make sure you go out and uh, go to TakeControlBooks.com. Uh, I'll have links in the show notes. Uh, and you uh, take a look and purchase. Buy. The, it's, it's, it's a great book, believe me. And it's uh, uh, fourteen ninety nine. dollars Did I get that price right? Uh, for uh, yeah. the uh, iOS, tw iOS 12 book that's out there. If you go to TakeControlBooks, like I said, dot com, there's all kinds of other great titles out there, too. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, just, just buy the book. I mean, but I wanted, wanted to get Josh on today and, and, t and talk a little bit about a lot of this stuff. I mean, he's also done a book on Apple TV. You did a, you did a great book on home automation and as well as you did a yeah. book on, you did a book on preview, uh, which was great. Um, yeah. Did that with Adam Hanks. Yeah. So, uh, I'll tell you and, what, the and, preview book was really worth the notes book. Yeah. It kind of, yeah, kind of go hand in hand, uh, mm -hmm. but between the two. So, but yeah, definitely go out there and, uh, and, uh, check out that website and, uh, for, uh, and uh, and tell everybody where how people can get a hold of you and how they can reach you. Uh, well, uh, you can see uh, most of my professional work on uh, at Tidbits, tidbits.com, where I write art, okay. write and edit articles. Um, uh, Take Control Books, you've already mentioned. Uh, if you look me up on YouTube, just search for Josh Sinners on YouTube. I, I try to make uh, at least one video a week uh, with uh, usually. Link. Usually, yeah, thank you. Usually focused on Apple stuff. And again, if you're brave and uh, you don't mind terribleness, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jay Centers. Uh, <laughs> you know, election season's coming up, so that should be fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to try to dial that back. I'm going to try to dial like I'm trying to dial my Twitter way back. It's just it's too much. Yeah, I, it is. I tend to have opinions that make everyone angry, so I should probably just keep them to myself. <laughs> no, I, I'm. Uh, um Absolutely thrilled you uh, came on today, and uh, appreciate you being here. So thanks for um, having me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's do this. It's a wrap. Let's uh, wrap it up for this week. Uh, please send your uh, comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address at feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS. You can also subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and even TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at intouchwithios.com where all the links to listen are on that page. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Again, thanks to my guest, Josh Sunners. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.